this is Lainey Cameron. I am so excited to be here today with Rebecca Taylor, who is the author of Her Perfect Life. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Lainey. How are you? I'm doing great. It's a Saturday morning as we're recording this, and um, I'm drinking water here. Um, are you having any fun yet today? What are you drinking? No fun yet, because I still have work I have to do after our, our interview, um, but I'm too fisting it with my non-alcoholic um, beverage. First, I have my tea. I drink hot tea pretty much um, all day long. It's not herbal or healthy. It's just black tea with milk. <laughs> it's a very, um, very English like my mother. And then um, I also, because it's getting very hot here in Colorado already, uh, getting ready for summer. So I also just have some like ice sparkling water um, to keep me from dying in my office today. <laughs> By the way, thank you for joining us on the week of your book launch, which is pretty cool. In fact, as this airs, it just came out just a few days ago. And um, let's talk more about the book. I will tell you that the phrase that keeps coming up as I was looking at your amazing Goodreads reviews for this book is page turner. So I picked Alison Hammer's example of that. But um, I said the same thing in my own review. I went back and looked at what I said because I was lucky enough to read it. And I said I was hooked within the first few yes, chapters. Which is exciting and amazing. And of course, always what you want to have happen. Um, when you're when you're working on something and um, apparently it is able to sort of sustain people's attention uh, for a day or two, which uh, I seem to be hearing a lot of them are finishing it pretty quickly. When, um, do you want to talk a little bit about the inspiration for the book? And we can also talk a little bit about the storyline. I mean, it de deals with some pretty deep themes, but in a really interesting way. In the book, Claire, and she comes to be known as Claire Collins, is a sort of internationally best-selling, um, uber successful author in the world. And then her sister Eileen has a sort of much more kind of conventional existence. Um, she's, you know, the book kind of opens up with her and her three kids and trying to get them ready for school. And, you know, as a mother myself, just the, the, you know, the chaos that that can then often entail. And so um, it, it really is this kind of uh, the different lives that these two sisters have led and, and um, some of the jealousy that Eileen kind of feels for her very successful sister, Claire. Well, that particular element of the story, the inspiration came from um, years ago. And I believe, I believe it was the 2012 Summer Olympics um, and Michael Phelps. During one of the races, the camera panned to the audience and they showed his family. And of course it was his, his mother, but it was the sort of first time I sort of dialed into the fact that he had these two sisters. And they're both older than him. And it just kind of, it kind of got the wheels turning in my head. Like, what, what must that be like? Like, what must it feel like to be the sibling of this, like, you know, international sensation, this international superstar kind of thing? So um, it, that kind of was the initial kind of question for that dynamic between, between Claire and Eileen's relationship. Now, with regards to what happens, you know, with Claire, and this is not really giving anything away because we really sort of learn in the second chapter that, you know, Claire, the very successful author, has taken her life. And so this is really sort of the impetus for Eileen um, going out to her sister's home in San Francisco and trying to figure out, like, why, you know, why would she sort of, um, you know, walk away from this amazing, apparently, seemingly amazing life that she had. And, um, I would say sort of the um, the inspiration for that really had to do with Kate Spade when Kate Spade took her her own life, you know, kind of thing. And not that this is any way based on her or her life, but, you know, there again, like a very successful designer in the world, um, internationally known. And, you know, she unexpectedly took her own life. And, and so um, I think this question with regards to, you know, external what do what does a life look like um, on the outside? What is that the media image of a life, you know, and what is it that we see and how very different that can be from what is happening internally uh, for an individual on that, you know, I also work in mental health. I work as a school psychologist. And so I happen to unfortunately um, do many suicide evaluations um, throughout a year, just, you know, when we're suspecting suicidal ideation and, and trying to help families, you know, through that time. And so um, that oftentimes, you know, it, nobody really seems to be immune from, from this, like the capacity to feel that, you know, we're so despondent and so depressed that, you know, we get driven to this place where um, we feel that that's the only option. But of course, the questions around this book are, you know, specific to Claire, like what, what got her to this point um, and made her feel like 
this was her only option or this is what she needed to do. That's what kept me reading. It was Eileen, the sister's need to know, right? Like she's this incredibly relatable character, the sister that is still alive that you wrote and her need to understand how her own sister could do this was so relatable, right? You know, it really is. If you think about if it was somebody related to you and particularly somebody that, you know, you kind of put up on this pedestal the way Eileen has done with her sister, um, you would be, you know, why, why, why? And her husband as well, who is, you know, equally as sort of in the dark as to why um, his wife would, would take her own life. So I, I have a question for you because it's a great book. What didn't make it into the book? Did you, and as you were going through editing, were there subplots or pieces of, of it that just had to go? What there was more of, and so as you go through the book, because I'm trying to paint um, sort of an entire picture about Claire, you know, and, and just her sort of psychological makeup. And for me, that always, you know, there always is elements of like your childhood, I think, that go into really forming who we are as, as individuals. And um, so there was actually probably a little bit more about her childhood. There was a little bit more specifically about the relationship between Eileen and Claire and um, what that was like when they were young. And, and then the other thing that got cut, and I still, I, this was one that, you know, and those were both, I think the first part I just described, that was a cut that was recommended by my agent. And then there was a cut by my editor and I actually, this was one I, I kind of wrestled with, and I think I pushed back a little bit, and then they pushed back, and I'm like, okay, fine, you know. <laughs> so, but is um, it, what it was is there is a scene where Claire is um, in, she's she's with her high school boyfriend, and they're camping. I don't know if you remember that, that yeah, yeah. you know, that lead up to that scene or whatever. And that scene actually ended with them having sex, but, and it, you know, they're still having sex in the book, but it's very off camera now okay. whereas at the before i i went in i wrote the scene like the whole thing like <laughs> the whole sex scene and he, my editor said oh, i don't know how comfortable i am with um this the teen sex in this and so i would say you know in my other writer life um i wrote young adult novels I'm trying to think if I have any, I don't think I have any explicit sex scenes in those books. And I think part of me, I was sort of like, I'm writing for adults now. Like, finally, I can write, you know, a proper sex scene. I just happened to be writing it between, they were 18, I think, I, if I remember correctly, they were 18. So technically, they're adults. But um, she suggested that we we cut it. And I was like, really? Maybe it'll be an extra someday. You could have it available in some I special know. I, like, I, should, I should, like, offer it on my website or something. Yeah. <laughs> So, so what about reading? I mean, obviously you've written this amazing page turning, but what are you reading? Have you enjoyed anything in particular recently? Yeah, so I have actually been reading quite a bit, of course, over the, the quarantine time. And I actually, I went back and reread a book that was a favorite of mine. And it was The, um, the Storyteller by Jodi Picot, which is, and I'm trying to, Oh, I had it lying around here somewhere. And so that is one of my all time favorite books. And in you know, she really is just such a master. And I think particularly in that book, because that is multiple characters, it's like multiple timelines, but not only that, she's taking um, this, this story, this, you know, fiction um, that this grandmother character wrote and integrating it into this just already amazing story. And so I, I it was one I wanted to go back because I, I think that that book in of itself is really sort of a masterclass on um, many different elements of, of writing complex fiction. So I read that. Actually, I'm currently in the middle of, and I brought them, I'm prepared. I'm currently in the middle of um, Happy and You Know It, uh, so this is uh, this was a May uh, book of the month club, and it was one of my picks. And so I'm about halfway through this right now, and this is just a a delight. It's about um, girlfriends, and they're all new mothers. And that was a long time ago for me. Both of my children are are now um, nearing the end of their high school years, but it definitely brought back a lot of memories about having young babies and the struggle, and um, really connecting with your girlfriends who are going through that that same time of life. And so I really, I have been enjoying this one quite a bit. And um, I'm also in the middle of reading. Um, so this is my, my girlfriend. Um, she's also, I'm in Colorado and this is a fellow Colorado author, uh, Kate Lansing. This is her debut cozy mystery um, and it's called The Killer Chardonnay. So this, um, I think it just came out, I, th I think it was the 25th. Of May. This is just, this is a book that's so perfect for right now. Um, it's based in Boulder. It's about this main character and she's opening up um, a little winery in Boulder. And this is like her dream <laughs> opening day uh, 
the critic, the like the feared nasty critic, um, ends up dying in her winery of, oh, wow. poisoning, of poisoning. Yeah. So I would say that this is just kind of the perfect like curl up on your back patio and and read this like wonderful book. So this is this is ending up being a favorite of mine right now. Is there anything else we haven't covered that you would like to share or you want to say? I don't think so. I, sh I should probably, here, I'll hold up the cover. I did bring my book. I, oh, perfect. Up. Perfect. And so at Rebecca Taylor author on Instagram. Yes. Taylorbooks.com uh, is your website. And I know you love to connect with readers, right? On, on your Instagram account. Yes, I am loving Instagram and the book community that's there and all of the amazing recommendations. Well, thanks so much for joining us today and best of luck with the book launch. I'm so glad it's out now. Thank you so much, Lainey, and have a great rest of your Saturday.